Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to make a start on putting together the HG P407. The assembly manual is quite light on warnings at the front, that's because they're all in the other manual. It does however show some of the bits in the kit, which is nice I suppose. For the tools we're going to need a set of allen keys, some pliers, something to drive nuts and a Phillips screwdriver. Chances are the screw heads are going to be those that don't quite fit any screwdriver properly, so choose wisely. Right, let's get started. The manual starts us with fitting the leaf springs on the axle. Before we do that though, it's worth mentioning there's reports of the axles not being greased inside. So if you have any doubts, open them up and check. These ones I can hear the grease getting squeezed between the teeth and I can feel the resistance when turning the axle so I'm fairly sure it's lubed up. As usual we'll be building it to the manual for the most part so we'll double check when we start changing things in a later video. Finding the parts for each section is quite easy. The bags are either marked with the part number and quantity on the labels or in the case of the screws they just have the screw sizes. In a lot of ways it's a little bit better than the usual bag A, bag B and so on. The manual itself has all the fixings and small parts listed on the left of the diagrams, so all we need to do is find the bits. For this page then we'll need the leaf springs, the U-bolts, the axle holders and mounts, 12 M3 flanged nylock nuts and 4 M3 plain nuts. HG do include a bag with some allen keys in, along with a standard cross wrench, some zip ties and some other bits. We're going to leave them in the bag though and use some bonders keys, as with any luck they will be a bit less likely to slip. We'll also need the bars that loosely connect the axle to the middle of the chassis. And for the plastics we need four of the E9 parts, the damper mounts. The axles don't have a platform built in for the leaf springs, so we can quite happily clamp them on anywhere along the axle and either way up. So before we start fitting the bits we need to be very sure that we've got it all the right way up. Now on the bottom of the axle, which is the top as I'm holding it as it's actually upside down, we need to put one of the large axle holders over the axle tube. We can now insert one of the link rods, which as it turns out we can install later rather than trying to hold it all together. Flip the axle over and pop one of the small leaf mounts on the other side of the axle tube. Next is one of the plastic damper mounts, followed by one of the leaf packs. You have to try and hold it all together while inserting two of the U-bolts over the leaf springs and through the axle holder. Keep it held together and turn the axle over, which is about the time you'll notice that the link rod isn't actually held in with anything. Right, the rear axle uses four of the flange nuts on the ends of the threads on the U-bolts. It's important that we don't do them up just one at a time. It's possible to distort the U-bolts, causing some weird stresses. What we need to do is tighten them up a turn at a time, moving from one to the next, until they're all just tight enough that the pack can still move on the axle, but it doesn't just flop around. Repeat with the pack on the other side, and we've got one axle ready to set up. What we do is fit the leaves into the mounts on the chassis, adjusting the position of the mount so the axle sits nicely, and that the axle angle has the drive input pointing straight forward. When they're all spot on, we can go around the nuts and tighten them up so the axle's firmly clamped. Now it might be a better idea to set the position after the leaves are mounted to the chassis. Either way, it's important that everything's positioned nicely or the suspension will bind up and probably cause premature wear. The front axle goes together in exactly the same way, except rather than level, the drive input should be at a 5 degree angle. There is a nice clear diagram, so you have to really work at it to get it wrong. That was step one then, so on to step two, mounting the rear axle. We'll be needing four M3x14s, which look like they have a layer of something light orange on them. I suppose it could be rust, but that's usually a bit darker. And we're going to need two M3x10s, four M3 nylocks, four aluminium casings according to the manual, but they're just short tubes, two O-rings, and two of the flanged tubes. And of course we'll also need the rear axle and the chassis. First we'll use the four long screws and the aluminium tubes to get the end of the leaf springs attached to the chassis. It's as simple as popping a tube into the loop on the end of a spring, then passing the screw through from the outside. 
We won't bother with the nuts until all four are in place. When fitting the nuts they should tighten up to the aluminium tube just fine. But just in case, make sure everything moves completely freely. If not, back off the nuts just a little bit to gain a bit of clearance. Next the long bars can go on. On the axle end there's a tongue that just slides in. The other end has a hole. It might have been nice if there was a ball end of some sort, but they're going to work. We need to slide an o-ring over the flange tube. Then the tube goes flange down towards the chassis over one of the holes in the centre brace, followed by the bar. The hole in the brace is threaded, so all we do is install one of the M3x10s. It's all a bit wobbly and loose, but it does seem to work. I wonder if we could get an o-ring above and below the bar to make it a bit more secure. Might be worth a try when we get to the mods. Repeat on the other side, and we've got some working, if rather stiff, rear suspension. Step 3, which is pretty much the same as step 2, using most of the same parts, plus a few bits to make up some steering. We've got the four M3x14s just like the rear, plus an extra one for the steering bell crank. Five M3 nylock nuts, five aluminium tubes, two ball end balls, the mounting plate for the steering bell crank, the bell crank itself, and the linkage that connects the bell crank to the hub. Now it might have been nice to have the lengths of the rod in the manual, just so we could double check. Right then, first we're going to install the balls on the bell crank. It does have a right way up, but as usual the diagram is very clearly printed. Fit the balls and one of the aluminium tubes at the pivot point. The bell crank then slots into the bottom of the metal mount, and one of the M3x14s gets inserted from the bottom with a nylon nut on the top. Just like the leaf spring screws, you should be able to bottom out the nut and still have the bell crank move freely. If not, just loosen the nut a bit. The next step with the bell crank was somewhat of a mystery, as the main diagram it's already fully fitted. After some thinking, I remembered as well as the assembly manual, there's also the full build manual. It looks like the bell crank mount is fitted during part of the chassis assembly. A little mistake missing that, but at least the info is there if you look for it. So we will be needing a couple of M3x12s, two M3 flange nuts and a plastic part E1. Now E1 is basically just a spacer that goes between the mount and the inside of the chassis. The holes are just tight enough that you can thread the two screws in so they're not going to fall out, which makes it much easier to assemble. With the spacer fitted on the mount we can offer the assembly up to the chassis just behind the upper damper mount. Then from the outside we fit the two flange nuts and tighten them up with an allen key and a cross wrench. Now we've got that done we can fit the axle to the chassis using exactly the same combination of aluminium tubes, screws and nuts as the rear. Actually since it really is exactly the same we're just going to skip ahead to fitting the linkage. The one we need is the middle length one which goes between the bell crank and the hub. To fit they just get a good squeeze with some pliers. The only thing to watch out for is damaging the ball. Having said that, just like the Tamiya ball ends, they're not the most precise, so we might well end up swapping them for some Traxxas ones later. If it's all gone well, the steering, or at least the half we already have, should move with almost no force at all. Step 4 now, the rear dampers. We're going to need two M3x20s, two M3 plain nuts, two M3 flange nuts, which took a while to find, as rather than being in their own bag, they're actually already fitted to the dampers. And out of the bag, the dampers are very oily. There's enough oil in the bag that they were probably supposed to be pre-filled. They feel pretty smooth though, and the damping isn't all that important anyway on a truck like this. It looks like the aluminium tube spacer is already fitted too, under the grommet. So that just leaves the two flange tubes. To fit the dampers, first the grommets need to be pushed into the hole on the tower. It's a lot easier to do when the tubes aren't fitted in the grommet, so the grommet can squeeze into the hole without damaging itself. Next the aluminium tube slides in, followed by the damper. Then from the top we just install one of the flange nuts. To tighten it up we need to peel back the rubber cover a bit so we can get a good grip on the lower nut. I'm using a regular pair of pliers, but a set with parallel jaws would be better but mine are downstairs though, or even just a small open-ended spanner, but my set is also downstairs. Still, the nuts don't need to be incredibly tight, so the old pliers will do the job. The bottom of the dampers are a bit closer to a typical RC setup, 
First, we need to press one of the M3 plain nuts into the plastic mount we fitted to the axle. It's got a hex shaped hole and it's a fairly tight fit, so make sure the nut goes in nice and straight. Next, the flange tube slides into the bottom of the damper with the flange towards the plastic. Then, to hold it all together, we just pop in one of the M3 screws and tighten it up. Repeat on the other side and we've got a fully working setup. Except, because the dampers have their own springs, the suspension is even stiffer now than it was before. Step 6 then, the front dampers. Most of this is exactly the same as the rear, but this time we're also fitting the front skid plate and some steering linkage. We're going to need two of the dampers, which have the flange nuts and aluminium spacers, two M3 plane nuts, two flanged tubes, four M3 nylon nuts, two M3 by 20s, and the long steering link. OK, the front dampers fit exactly the same way as the rears, so we'll just skip right through it. Suffice to say, they fit quite nicely. Next, we can clip on the drag link that goes between the hubs, just a quick squeeze with some pliers, and the job's done. The steering looks like it works pretty well, except the linkage is just touching the axle where the input is. We might end up with a custom linkage there, maybe with a bit of a bend in it to get some clearance. The last bit for today will be the skid plate. Now it should just drop onto the bottom of the axle, but unfortunately it doesn't quite line up. The axle and leaf springs are set so they're in a relaxed position, so there's no side load on the leaves. The problem is, that makes the threads that the skid fits over just ever so slightly too far apart. Now we could open up the slots in the skid, and we might still do that, but for now we'll just loosen the nuts and squeeze up the mounts a little bit to make it fit. It's less than a millimetre out, so it's not going to be the end of the world. To hold it in place, we just use the four nylon nuts, which look nice, but the threads don't quite reach the nylon bit on the nut. I'm not going to worry too much though, as the chances are we're going to end up running without the skid anyway. I'm going to bet that the skid will get hung up on the terrain more than just the bare axle. So that's it for this week then, and so far I'm quite impressed with the fit of the parts. The manual could have done with a bit of a proofread though. It looks like next time we're going to be fitting the gearbox and the servos, so that should be interesting. Ok, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you're not already, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!